Greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to this night ending bonus upload. Before we jump into it, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. The merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost you a cent. Click the like button. It takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and yes, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's night-ending bonus upload, shall we? Today's first subscriber submitted experience. Hi Jeff, I live on Vancouver Island in a small oceanside village called Bowser. One of my favorite pastimes is exploring the mountains and old overgrown abandoned logging roads in my small mini truck. It fits in places only a quad can go so I really get into the backcountry far away from other people. One of my favorite trails to go on is a very narrow and steep one which climbs up the slope of Mount Schofield, where at the top is a magnificent view east over the ocean, island, and coastal mountains. In the fall of 2021, I was driving to the top of this trail to get some sunset views of the ocean and coast mountains. While I was enjoying the solitude of this rugged, steep, and twisted drive, I noticed through the dark, thick trees about 70 feet away, a large dark shape paralleling me on the right. I figured it may be a black bear, or possibly even a grizzly, which has been recently starting to invade our island. Or it could have been a Roosevelt elk, which inhabits the island as well. And I have seen several of these in the area. The random thought also crossed my mind that what if it may be a Sasquatch? which is known to inhabit the land. That would be cool to see, but all I could determine was that it was large and dark. I was driving at between 5 and 10 kilometers per hour, so whatever it was had no problem keeping up with me. About halfway up this mountain, I rounded a 100 degree turn to my right and started up a steep incline. The creature appeared out of the trees, and 40 feet in front of me, on the right, it looked like a huge wolf. There are some subspecies of gray wolf on the island, but this was three times their size, and also very dark. It looked to me similar to a black timber wolf of northern British Columbia, but still larger. It stood there staring at me. It reminded me of a giant black Tibetan mastiff on steroids because of the thick, almost mane around it, its head and shoulders. It was beautiful in its horror and ferociousness, and it also smelled like dog urine and skunk cabbage through my open window. It had some black, gold, and gray colors to its fur. Its pointed ears were a good five to six inches long. I felt very bad vibes about it as its yellow eyes pierced into my soul. I quickly rolled my window up, feeling naked and vulnerable, as it was the one time I didn't bring my 4570 government Marlin rifle with me. We have cougar on the island, and I almost always have my rifle with me in the bush. I put the truck in first gear and started moving slowly forward to see if I could scare it off. The creature didn't move until I got about 20 feet from it. Then the beast stood on its hind legs and 
held onto a tree near it, I believe I was more than shocked. I would estimate that this thing was eight feet tall at least. It was very well muscled with black claws. At least three inches long, it growled and bared its fangs at me. The growl I could hear and feel over the engine noise of my truck. It slowly and menacingly approached me, standing upright growling and staring at me with those demonic yellowish golden eyes. About six feet away, it dropped down onto all fours, growling, staring at me over its left shoulder as it disappeared into the thick trees on the left side of the road. I estimated its muzzle was higher than the bottom of my windshield of my truck when it was on all fours, which is about 48 inches off the ground. I have never heard of any animal like this before on the island. After some online research, I came across your site, and what people are describing as what I had seen exactly. How it got here is a mystery. As I said, grizzly have recently invaded the island by swimming here across the very narrow strait between the island and the mainland. Maybe these beasts has also done that. If there is more than one, have also swam the distance. I have hunted in this brush in 55 years, defended myself from bear, cougar, and other beasts. I have never felt so afraid, but this encounter left me shaking. The size of the creature, its powerful body, and its menacing persona was nothing like I had ever encountered before. My 4570 is now my constant companion when I go exploring in the backcountry, driving or walking. Al from Bowser, British Columbia, Canada. Today's second subscriber submitted encounter. Good afternoon, Jeff. It's Kay. I have a bit of time to share with you some things that have happened in PA. Not sure where to start because it's been since 85, 86 up until now. I'm 43 years old. I've grown up in the outdoors, have hunter friends. I can identify almost all animals where I live. I'm also super close to many other sightings. I spent a lot of time in the Mitchell State Forest where many other counters come from. I have some of my own there. It's 85,000 acres. I spend my time in the Tuscarora Forest as well, which is 96,000 acres and many mountains, and the Nittany Mountains in Appalachian. I don't have any dogman experience. I have Bigfoot, Crawler, Demon, Angel, and Paranormal. My first encounter was when I was five. I wasn't yet in kindergarten, and I never saw a werewolf movie. We had a two-story home, if you stood facing our home on the grass, you could bend down and look into our basement area. My room was on the second floor. With the living room, there's an apple tree outside my window and if you climb it, you can see it. A normal person couldn't see in. I'll just speed it up because there are a lot of details. It was nighttime and I was on one of the couches with my dying mom on the other. Looking at the TV, the windows were behind the TV with lace curtains kind of open. It was late at night and dark. I was woken by tapping on the window. I sat up and looked around. I couldn't understand how my mom wasn't hearing this. I looked around the window to see huge red eyes. The tapping continued. It was pitch black, but the fun night lit, but a fun night light we had. Fun night light up, fun night light we had. I have no idea what that means. Up against the window was a huge jet black German shepherd like thing pressing its nose and teeth at me. It never stopped tapping and smiled. I remember thinking, how big a dog is out there. Then fear hit me. Its eyes stayed on me and the tapping. 
I went behind the couch, and it watched me. I must have fallen asleep and told my mom what happened, but she said it was just a bad dream. Those eyes followed me and my friends for years when I was growing up. Then in 94 or 95, I was around 15, and I was with my cousin. She was 11. It wasn't far from the house where the first encounter happened. She ran inside and said there was a werewolf outside. It was maybe 7 p.m., still pretty well lit. Anyway, I laughed at her, and she was crying badly. I believed her, so I went out to see myself. She begged me not to go, but we went. I got a good look at this one. It was different. It was brown with a look with a scared look. Oh, it was brown, excuse me. It was brown and looked sick. That's what they meant. Uh, we watched it for about 10 or 15 minutes. I have to, I have a lot to say about that. Now there is no name but werewolf at this point, and it kind of reminded me of the howling, but not fully. I found your channel in 2017 and finally had a name, Dogman. I moved five minutes up the road to 600 acres of woods, creeks, fields, and Black Angus Farm. I have decades of stories, so I moved to where I am now when COVID hit in 2020 to get away from dogman, crawlers, ghosts, demons, only to move into a hot spot. Here's the blue dot in the picture, and I'm always in the woods. I live in them along the Cano Dargnet Creek. There's a cave five minutes away from me. Um, I have seen a pack. I have seen a dead dog man. I have a lot of stuff to share. If we could just keep my name to K, I have a military family. My dad was in Vietnam, a master sergeant for 25 years. He told me stories, but he killed himself in 2000. So this is the general area, the blue dot she was talking about. You can see all of the mountains um, that surround where she lives. She's also very close to Delaware. Wondering if this is anywhere uh, close to where that dog man incident happened. Uh, where the fisherman was fishing and saw that dog man. Um, my family and close friends know how spiritual I am and that I get messages. Uh, after that, more things happened that day. Okay. And I've got her second encounter right here. Hey, Jeff. Kay here again. Happy Friday, my second encounter. Uh, I was 15. We did get to watch the dog man, like I said, for 10 to 15 minutes. In 2012, I was hit by a drunk driver as I walked across the street to get my eight-year-old daughter at the time. Boy, do I have a story about that. I can tell you after my accident, I moved five minutes from where I grew up and my encounters on this property of 600 acres of woods, creeks. The farmer had a soy, soybean field and big black Angus farm with huge cows. This is where things got crazy. We had deer, owl, all kind of bird, turkey, coyote on this property. I dealt with dog man, not one, but a few. We would hear the cows at night being ripped up. We would see the farmer at times laid on the ground with a Black King sniper rifle. Not only was Dogman here, but there were crawlers, ghosts, demons, and a lot of UFO activity. The Fort Indian Town Gap was close as well. Fast forward, I'm skipping a lot. I just wanted to share this with you. It's very near and dear to my heart. 
Uh, I will show you what I'm aiming for, which is to make my daughter's room very comfortable. April 8th, 2021, my 17-year-old at the time, she was pregnant with my grandson. He ended up passing away right before his due date as the umbilical cord. Uh, he was so perfect, so my daughter just had the bassinet. There were no batteries in it yet. The windows were closed, no pets in the room. I was in the room with my phone in my sweater pocket. I was crying, just praying out loud, trying to make her room comfortable to come home since we were all set for my grandson. Now she's heartbroken with no baby to come home to. A heads up, when we got her to labor delivery, we were tasked to prepare for baby's cremation so we picked out a blue out a blue and blue butterfly so I was setting up butterfly lights in the room I kept saying God and my grandson I hope I'm doing this okay I hope I'm helping my daughter with this pain to take it away or help fix her now the video gets shaky because I caught movement I was crying once I caught movement I got a message in my head I know it sounds weird. I look across the room at the bassinet toy and saw that it had moved. So I said, God and my grandson, please let me get this video for my daughter, which I did. So she's got a lot of paranormal experiences as well. Uh, I think I'm going to have her come on and share um, her experiences with us. And we'll just get, get through a couple of subscriber encounters. We've got a neat one here. This is kind of an interesting one. Um, now, there's a paranormal researcher that I know. <clears throat> or not paranormal researcher, I'm sorry. A dogman cryptid researcher. And he was out in the woods one day, one evening, and he had the feeling like he was being watched. Um, he could hear movement behind him and to the sides of him, but he kept getting guided through the woods by orbs or lights in the woods. That's exactly what this encounter is all about. Hey Jeff, my name is B and something strange and interesting happened last night while I was taking my dog outside. I noticed this light coming from the woods next to my house at around 2 a.m. I don't sleep much and my dog has been wanting to go outside a lot during the nights. At first it was, at first it looked like two glowing eyes about six inches apart and around six feet off the ground moving back and forth. I quickly got the dog back in the house and grabbed my flashlight and phone. Back outside, I started recording this light, trying to figure out what it was. If it was some sort of animal shine or not. But at this time, it seemed like one ball of light that would flicker dim in and out while changing colors. While shining my flashlight into the woods, picking up some smaller green eye shine lower to the ground, this orb, or whatever it was, would dim completely out. When I would shine my flashlight near it, and the video on my phone kind of glitched a bit, which I noticed was odd, the light disappeared, so I went back to my screened porch and noticed it started to flicker again, so I recorded a second video before running outside. At about an hour or so later, I looked up to see if it was still there, went back outside on the porch to record it, this time with the outside lights off, because it seemed to know when it was being watched, it would dim itself completely out. This time the light seemed higher off, but still within the wood line, at about 12 to 15 feet from the ground. It would flicker in and out at times, getting really bright, and you could see it changing colors as it pulsated. 
I live in a rural area surrounded by woods, crop fields, and water with a lot of deer that hang out in that area. Around my house and even graze in my backyard often, and I always wondered if that would attract them. One of these cryptid creatures into the area. Some nights it gets very eerie and quiet, as last night when the light was around. Although I've never seen had a cryptid encounter that I can recall, I've had multiple paranormal experiences over the years. Hmm. So yeah, that really kind of reminds me of Ronald Murphy's, you know, seeing that orb kind of guiding him through the woods almost, or messing with him a little bit. And tonight's final subscriber submitted encounter. Hey Jeff, I wanted to share an incident my daughter had in the early December of 2013. To respect my daughter and former son-in-law's privacy, I'm not using anyone involved in this experience actual name. Where I live and where she was living at the time will be actual locations. My wife's stepdaughter and I went to visit my daughter from my ex-wife who lived in South Central Oklahoma from Austin, Texas, where we lived. We were up to give my daughter and son-in-law some Christmas presents, along with some baby stuff due to my daughter being six months pregnant. They lived with my son-in-law's grandparents, about 50 miles north of Oklahoma, Texas border in the middle of nowhere between Davis and Sulphur, Oklahoma. The house was down a narrow paved road with houses around and spaced out about a mile apart and their driveway was not paved. Ruts ran about a quarter mile off the road with trees running down the driveway about two feet from that rut on the passenger side of the car going into the road to the house. It was a Saturday night right before Christmas. My son-in-law was at work while we were visiting and putting together a stroller and playpen. While we were there laughing and enjoying our time together, R comes home from work, and a few minutes after, he joined us. I heard my daughter and him whispering, Go ahead, tell him, he'll believe you. When I hear this, I'm thinking, what kind of stuff has my daughter and my son-in-law gotten into? I'm expecting to hear something crazy like, Dad, we're swingers. But what my son-in-law proceeded to tell me got my attention. He said a couple of weeks before, he and my daughter and a friend of theirs had gone to see a movie. They were driving down the driveway toward the house about 9.30 when something stepped out from the tree line. Its stride stretched from the trees to in front of the driver's side headlight area. It was so close to the car, all they could see was up about whatever its armpits were. It was covered in black fur with long arms and a long swing while moving as it didn't seem to pay attention to them and ran past them. My son-in-law hit the brakes trying not to hit this thing as they're looking to his left watching it run off into an actual open field and disappearing into the darkness. The whole incident took three seconds, he estimated. He was extremely nervous about telling me this experience. While I could see, my daughter was terrified as he was telling it. Joy's reaction convinced me that they had seen something that scared them. I went and asked Barry what he thought about the story. His reply was, yeah, the three of them came running in talking about how they saw something. I told them they were imagining things. Then I asked if all three saw the same thing, which he said yes. So how could all three people imagine the same thing? He got an irritated look on his face. I thought you had more sense than that. <clears throat> something that I found very interesting was my daughter, who was full-blooded Chickasaw, was in the room with us and didn't say a word. This woman has something to say about everything. And I believe this was the longest I'd ever heard her not say anything. I remember watching Bigfootville on Travel Channel back in 05. One person talked about how Native Americans don't talk about Bigfoot because they believe they will show up. 
I went to the kids' room where everyone else was at the time. Joy was still a little shaky. I asked if anything strange was going on on their property. I think they have 20 acres. To which they said no, but about half the cats had disappeared, and three of Barry's dogs were kept outside in a kennel, are now missing. I told them that could be explained because there are coyote in the area, though they never said they heard any dogs being attacked when they came out missing. <clears throat> they lived there for a few more years, not seeing anything else. I've tried talking to Joy about a few times after this, from 2014 through 18, but she said she didn't want to talk about it because it still scared her to talk about it. Joy and Rick eventually in, moved into Sulphur from there, eventually split up, but neither has had another encounter. My daughter remarried, had one more kid, and moved further north from that area, but I did look up where she had moved to to see if there had been any cryptid sightings in the area and found there were a couple, one of which was a dogman sighting about a year ago, which lives outside of town, surrounded by fields, some wooded areas, nearby a cemetery, uh, about a mile down the road. What are the chances of her having another encounter? I think unlikely, but a lot of experiences on your channel, people seem to have multiple encounters. Hopefully it won't happen again. Thank you for your time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that night ending bonus as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Your support is honestly what makes this channel continue to grow and go and what makes it special. It is truly appreciated. Guys, with that being said, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there, and they are dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.